So I'll turn it over to Jake. And Jake, you, you know that Absolutely. microphone. Speak close. Speak close. Yeah. You can hear me now? Yes. All right. Uh, first, I want to mention I, um, I brought my vintage $40 Radio Shack a laser pointer. Yeah. I must have bought it like 15 years ago. And this may be good for HP collectors, because as you can tell, it's a red dot. <laughs> um, I got excited about the 34S a, a while ago, and it, for the people who were here last year, you can remember I got up here and said, you know, these guys would like some assistance, and if, if anybody's got technical assistance, I can get the code onto a real machine. Uh, please help them, and um, the rest is history. Uh, a great thing has happened, and I'm real excited about it. And the thing, one of the things that excited me the most was that it adopted essentially the entire 16C instruction set. No machine prior to this from HP was able to do that for whatever reason. They, they, they deemed it not a priority or whatever, and um, the fact that the whole 16 was in there uh, got me excited enough to basically take the 34 code um, and work through the 16C manual page by page until I got all the way through it and reported bugs as we went, and of course they turned them around and fixed them every day, and it was tremendous. So. What I thought would be helpful for people, one, to realize if you're a 16C fan, how powerful the 34S is in the 16C realm. And also, um, for those who you know, know the 16 a little bit and just want to get an idea of how to work those functions on the 34, I thought it might be neat to take every 16C function and, and line it up next to the 34S function so you could see a corresponding keystroke sequence between the two. And, and in your packet, I guess in the smaller stapled handout is a color copy of my six-page presentation, um, the last four pages of which is a chart basically based on about six pages in the 16C manual. It starts on page 120. It's the complete function summary, and it's in the order of those functions. In the 16C manual, it takes every function and shows 16C keystroke sequence to get to that function, followed by 34S keystroke sequence to get to the same exact function. What I ended up doing, it, it took more than a month. I did screen captures from both manuals and you know and, and extracted surgically you know, <laughs> images of every key and every function and build it into that spreadsheet there. And hopefully it's it's going to be useful because if you got a 16C program, that should help convert it over to 34S. So uh, let's just get into it. Th these slides are kind of a, a summarize it in, in a sort of a different way. Uh, first, I wanted to mention something that happened a while ago. Uh, I, the first 16C I got, literally the week it was, was introduced, I, I picked it up on my honeymoon. We were in California, and we drove over to Tom Hooper's house, and he was a little HP dealer, and he put the machine in my hand. So I've had it since early, mid-1982. And when the 16 was discontinued and the functionality never made it into the into any successive machine, uh, it was rather unsettling to me because I was working on hardware at the time that required octal ones complement arithmetic, and uh, nobody else was doing ones complement. Um, so, uh, having befriended Rick Gravel in the 1990s, we put together this um, 16C emulator library for the 48 series, and um, and that's just a picture of the keyboard overlay we had. It redefined the entire keyboard. and did port all the 16C functions and a few additional things over to the 48, um, but time marches on. So let's just talk about the 16C memory layout a little bit. The whole memory is 203 bytes. You've got the four level stack in the last X. Um, and you've got storage registers, and in this example, they're, if they're designated as 16 bits wide, bit wide each, um, the directly addressable ones, uh, there's 32 of them, and then there's others you can use with indirect addressing. And program memory and, and data memory uh, share the same space, so obviously you're not going to fit a whole lot of steps if you have a lot of registers with only 203 bytes. In the 34S, um, Again, you've got you've got your stack. It's more like a 41. There's a 31-byte alpha register. You've got uh, a four-level stack or an eight-level stack. 
Uh, and you could use the mode function size 4 or size 8 to give you those things. And, the, and they're letter, letters or X, Y, Z, T, A, B, C, D. And you've got an L and an I register uh, for last X. And um, uh, besides that, and the register 0 to 99, general purpose, and, and those, um, there's a J and a K, um, along with uh, 104 flags and, and 506 program steps. And you know, if that wasn't enough for you, there are multiple, multiple banks of that program memory. So this thing is, is uh, quite spacious. Uh, let's just go through some of the functionality and line them up side by side. On the 16C with the four level stack, you've got your typical enter, roll down, roll up, which is G shifted. Uh, on the 34, roll up is H shifted. Uh, X exchange Y, uh, clear X, uh, last X, and in the 34C, um, it was argued at one point, why isn't there a last X function? And the answer was, well, since last X could only fit on a shifted key plane, it would take two shifts. It's, it's essentially recall L, so they just took it off the keyboard and said, just press recall L, so you can, you, last X does that. Um, to switch to floating point mode on the 16, it's F float and a, and a digit, and on the uh, 34, it's F and the H dot D uh, shifted position. Um, and on the 16, to turn leading zeros mode on or off, it's uh, set flag or clear flag three. And those are specific uh, modes in the 34S mode, leading zero on, leading zero off. Uh, math functionality, arithmetic, square root reciprocal absolute value remainder. Uh, again, double multiply, double divide, double remainder. These are all in the X dot function catalog. And if you don't know, if you go to the, you know, there's a there's X dot function, and if you want to skip to a function whose first letter you know, you hit H shift X dot function and you key that letter and it will jump you to that portion of the catalog so you can get there pretty fast. Uh, in addition, uh, in the in the base uh, mode, uh, the machine permits a square, 10 to the X log, 2 to the X log, to the base 2, and Y to the X, and those all are available when you're running the integer arithmetic. Uh, base conversions, there were four primary keys on the 16, on the 34S, You've got F shifted 2 and 10, G shifted 8 and 16, and, but they went one step further. Uh, there is a base function in the mode menu, and you can set it to any base uh, between 2 and 16. So this is an example showing you base, uh, base uh, 14, uh, minus 4 indicating 14. Uh, base 13, um, it would just, you know, when you're keying it in, that's what's going to look like. Uh, Complement modes on the 16, you have on the F shift to key plane on the 34S, these are individual modes. Uh, you can set the word size between 1 and 64 bits in a similar way. Uh, on the 16, the word size was taken, was taken as an argument off the stack. On the 34, it's in line uh, right in the function itself. Although, if you wanted to take it off the stack, you could use indirect, uh, word size indirect, whatever. Um, for those who are familiar with the 16, the display only shows you eight digits at a time, so the window function allows you to see uh, positions zero through seven, where each of those represented eight positions of a number. So if you had a 64-bit binary and you wanted to see the top eight bits, you'd go to Windows 7. On the uh, 34S, you've got F and G uh, with a left arrow, and that will give you 12-digit chunks of the number. So you can move over, move over, and the display actually reminds you how many, what chunk you're in and how many chunks there are, which is rather nice. Uh, bit manipulation, the 16 had set bit, it has clear bit, test a bit and uh, return the number of bits set in the, in the word. 34S goes a lot farther. You've got all those, you've got set bit, clear bit. You've also got flip bit, which I would call invert bit, so you could swap the, the state of the bit. You could test if a bit is set or if a bit is clear. Uh, you can, again, compute the number of bits, but if you don't like the fact that it does the inline value, if you were converting a program and you needed to take it off the stack, 
you could put it in the Y register and use indirect, and it, and it would work that way in the right arrow as the indirect, <coughs> indirect function. Uh, logical operations and or not an XOR are standard, but the 34S adds NAND, NOR, and XNOR as well in the X dot function catalog. Uh, rotating, shifting, and masking operations. The 16 has quite a few of those. There's 14 of them. The 34S has the exact same set with, uh, of course, with more. Um, rotate left N can be done as rotate left indirect Y, so you can take your argument off the stack. Um, in the case of shift left and shift right in the 16C or arithmetic shift, uh, those only did one digit, one, one uh, position. Uh, on the, again, on the 34S, if you use shift left 01, you get the same function, but you could shift left as many as you want because you can take the argument in the function or use indirect and put in whatever you need. Um, again, alpha shift right, left justify. There's also a right justify in the 34S. Uh, mask left and mask right. Uh, again, either off the stack using uh, interact or in line. For register operations, 16's got store and recall. It's got store with the, the uh, specific I register for indirect and, and the store indirect function. Again, recall from the register, recall indirectly. <coughs> or uh, swap X in the I register, swap X in indirect. In the 34S, there's no specific uh, indirect register. It works like the 41. You can designate any register in the machine to be used for, for uh, indirect addressing. So you've got store in, store indirect in, recall, um, X interchange N, X interchange indirect N. Um, and something I didn't discover until this year, I don't know why it took me this long, 16C does not have storage register arithmetic. Somehow I assumed that it had, but the 34 does. It's storage and recall register arithmetic, so you can, you can go crazy. Can I interrupt you? Sure. There is a subtle difference between memory allocation scheme and the 16C and the 34S. The 34S has always its 100 registers and the stack and some specials, which are always eight bytes wide. So if you store a 30-bit word in an eight-byte register, you, you, you waste uh, half of it. Um, in the 16C, if you switch the word size, the complete allocation of the memory of the registers changes. You can even use it to combine or, or, or dissect words. <laughs> so you can't do this the same way on the 34 s Understood. And that is, uh, that's the reason why we, we change the, the mode, the mode switching between code and integer works differently. On the 16C, there is some kind of formula which helps in some cases. I never understood <coughs> what the code point to do the binary. Uh, we removed this because it was, it was not a test space for, for a function nobody know what it was meant for. So we just convert the stack to the new format. So if you, if you go from an integer format to a real format, uh, you put one, two, three, four on the stack, in either uh, mode you get the same numbers uh, in the other mode if you switch between binary and floating uh, point. That's a huge advantage, in my opinion. And I attempted to do the 16C way when writing the uh, the, the IEEE 32-bit format conversion routines that are in the 16C manual. And it was quite a challenge getting it to work in the 16C way. And uh, this is real nice. Um, this is my last slide. I just wanted to say a little bit about programming again. Uh, 203 steps in the 16 minus the space occupied by storage register. You've got program label, label 0 to 9, A to F, and, and four levels of subroutine. Uh, 34S, of course, 506 steps times at least eight sets. Program label 0 to 99, A through D, and three character alpha, and eight levels of subroutine. And just a snippet of timing. Um, I if you fill the stack with ones and write the program label A plus, go to A, you press run stop for 10 seconds. The 16C gives you 38 counts. 34S gives you 52,000 counts. There's about a 1,300 to 1 difference, at least in this example. Um, with the IEEE floating point program, I, I wrote it in both 
on the, on the 16, it took between eight and 10 seconds on average with running, running, running in this play. The 34S, you press it and get the answer. So it's quite impressive. It's impressive hardware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, this does not repeat what's in the handout. I, you know, the goal was to get the handout into people's hands and hopefully it will give them an idea that you can really respect the 34S firmware. And if you're a 16C lover like me, um, you'll, you should take to the 34S rather nicely, uh, especially if you're writing programs because they're so lightning fast. Any questions? Yeah, I'm curious how many people in here have, have or have had a 16C. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, this is the right crowd. <laughs> now, along with that, you know, how many people in here would like to see another 16C? <laughs> Three packs of 16. I already got a 16C at all, you can't have it. A 16C has been an essential tool in the development of a 34 s number. <laughs> That's it. I guess we're moving on.